the the audio in the last video was super sh <laughs> so i'm gonna try to not i'm gonna if i hold it like here does this sound okay i i've been into naruto since i was a kid i'm kind of not really anymore but i used to really be a naruto writer when i was way younger i would watch it every week when it showed like it, it was premiering when i was a kid and i remember seeing the tuning exams every every like friday or whatever it came out i would lock myself in my room i was like mom don't talk to me it naruto for the next like hour i can't it was awesome it was great i loved that show that was like my first anime so i wanted to talk about naruto versus neji because i haven't seen anybody really bring up this point from the fight Naruto vs. Neji is a great fight. It feels like one of those underdog fights until you think about it too much. And, you know, me being a writer, I've thought about it way too much. With Naruto vs. Neji, Naruto and Neji are fighting as part of the Chunin exams. It's like a tournament arc, just like in any good anime. The reason that this fight doesn't make much sense once you think about it is that the whole fight is predicated around destiny. Neji's a total bag, by the way. Can I say that? He's a asshole. He's so rude all the time. Once a failure, always a failure. You can't change that. You're a failure. But he's a total to like anybody out there because he thinks he's such a good ninja and all this shit. I didn't realize it when I was a kid, but I was like, dude, now I'm like, who the f is this guy? Like, I'll kick your ass myself, you know? But the whole fight is centered around destiny, and Neji essentially says like, oh, you can't change your destiny, blah de blah blah you know, you want to become Hokage Naruto? Pfft. You fucking moron, you want to be Hokage, you? It feels very shonen -y. Neji's whole like, you can't do that. <laughs> but at the time, I was like, oh, this guy, he doesn't believe in Naruto? What? That's crazy. Kick his ass, you know? Like, Naruto, in the whole first part of the anime, before Shippuden starts, he's always framed as this, like, underdog dude who, like, you know, he has to work super hard to get to where he is and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah, that's true. But slight spoilers for Shippuden. I know it came out three years ago, but still. Once you get into Shippuden, he's also revealed to be the son of the fourth Hokage. He's the reincarnation of a god and the reincarnation of the first Hokage plus the nine tails. That's four things that give Naruto a massive edge over anyone with a pulse. This whole fight is about Naruto just being a normal kid and Neji is supposed to be like the gifted natural talent too cool for school ninja and what really gets me is like dude as soon as you watch shippuden the meaning of this fight just goes straight out the window he has so much sh that just makes him better than everybody else and like no one says anything no one's like oh yeah i don't want to with naruto he's got a he's got a nine tails in him like no one ever says that which is crazy what i also like about this fight is sort of the fighting tactics behind it. If you ignore the whole shtick about destiny, Neji is like super arrogant, which yeah, Neji is super strong, but like he can still get his ass beat, you know? Like he's not, uh, he's not the end all be all ninja that he thinks he is. That overconfidence in his abilities is what makes him vulnerable. Naruto actually takes advantage of this because in the final part of the fight, for the first time in the whole fight, Neji lets down his guard. And that's all that Naruto needs. Bravo, Bravo. That ain't Falco. That ain't Falco. Oh, 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 oh. He just needs that one little opening to just murder him. He just kills him in one punch. It was awesome. It's like 30 seconds apart. He tells him like, you're a failure. You're so bad, blah, blah, blah. And then he just, it just, ah, it's so good. So that overconfidence is what leads to his downfall. That arrogance breeds vulnerability. This is the dumbest thing I've ever said, but I have over 5,000 wins in Ultimate Storm 4. That's that's way too much. I need to go outside more, but I'm still proud of it because I really like the game. And one of my main things was like overconfidence in my abilities. And so I would take on super tough guys. And then when I would get my ass beaten, I would get mad. You know, I'd be like, ah, 
I, I would immediately like turn off the game. I'd be like, okay, you, we fought together. Please never talk to me again. I was way too sensitive to lose a match, despite having all of this overconfidence, you know? And the same thing kind of happens to Neji. In front of the entire village, he gets his beat by like supposedly the weakest kid. It really changes him, you know? What really gets me is like he, he realizes that he can't be a dick anymore because he finally got beaten. So he's just, he completely drops it and no one ever says anything. He just like, okay, I'll stop being mean. <laughs> and ah, it's just crazy. If you're arrogant, dude, and you're overconfident, it leaves you vulnerable to your own flaws and your own weaknesses. And it really, really hurts when you get proven wrong. I would like to say, there's other stuff going on in this episode, actually a couple things. So Hinata, she becomes sick during the fight, and Kabuto, who's like a medical ninja and a spy, he like heals her, but in the in the animation, she, he like lays her on the ground, and then he just straight up like gropes her, like he just puts his hand on her boob, and she's like 12 years old, and I didn't notice this until now, I just rewatched it. dude. Kabuto's trying to cop a feel here, like no one says anything, and I'm like, dude, what's going on? Couldn't he just like put his hand on her head or like somewhere? It just feels weird to like see him put his hands on her like that, and I'm like, oh, sh Kabuto, you know, he's looking to go to jail, I mean... Okay, last, last thing. This whole fight's about destiny, right? That's the whole shtick with this, which is clearly, that's not right at all. This fight disproves itself in the middle of the fight, like at the end of the fight, because Naruto, to win, pulls out his plot armor, the Nine Tails, which was given to him by Destiny. I just thought that was like a, a huge oversight on uh, Kishimoto's part. I was like, bro, are you sure? I don't know, that doesn't really sound good. Yeah, I just wanted to talk about that. I just wanted to show off my Naruto knowledge. 5,000 wins in Ultimate Ninja Storm. Come on, come on, that's pretty good. 10-10 main, I'm a 10-10 main. 10-10, she's, she's my girl. I love her to death. I would kill for her, I would die for her. I have died a lot as her, but all right, that's about it for me, yeah. See you later.